Okay, so the topic of this video is going to be some of the basic differences in how organisms get their energy. There's two broad categories of how organisms get their energy on Earth. Organisms are either called heterotrophs or autotrophs. All life needs energy, but how they get their energy is a little different from one another. So let's start with the autotrophs. So autotrophs, when you look at the basic definition of an autotroph, they are organisms that can make their own energy. Now there's two kinds of autotrophs, however one of them we're more familiar with and one might be a little mysterious. So the first type of autotroph I'd like to mention are called the photoautotrophs, and these are the ones that use sunlight to do photosynthesis. Plants are a great example. In the animation you see sunlight, you now also see carbon dioxide gas, and now you also see water. These are the three basic ingredients in a very complex chemical reaction called photosynthesis. And at the end of photosynthesis, what the plant releases, I think we know they release a life-giving gas called oxygen, but that's not the reason why plants and other photoautotrophs do photosynthesis. They do photosynthesis because they're making their energy, they're making their food, they make glucose, which is a type of a sugar. And so photosynthesis is how organisms like photoautotrophs, like plants, feed themselves. So plants are probably the most obvious example of photoautotrophs, but there are others. There are other organisms that do photosynthesis. Let's not forget there are some bacteria called cyanobacteria that are photosynthetic autotroph. And uh, there's algae. Algae are photosynthetic autotrophs. In the picture, these are called diatoms or diatoms, however you would like to pronounce them. And then there's the second kind of autotroph, the chemoautotrophs. And, and these are typically bacteria, and, and not all bacteria, but some bacteria. And they do a process called chemosynthesis. And they still produce their own food. They still produce their own energy. They just don't use sunlight. They use chemicals. Chemicals such as methane are involved in a fairly complex chemical reaction. And the, the product, what's created, is energy for them to use. So autotrophs, whether they're photoautotrophs or chemoautotrophs, autotrophs are often called producers since they produce the energy of an ecosystem. Here's a food chain and you can see that the plants at the bottom make energy for the insects and that energy moves up and up and up and up and up the food chain. Well, what about the heterotrophs? So the heterotrophs are kind of just the opposite. These are organisms that cannot make their own energy through photosynthesis or through chemosynthesis. So they find ways to get energy in other means. And so we're going to go over the different kinds of consumers. Here's a wolf as a great example of a consumer. You'll see another example involving a wolf in a moment. So one of, the, uh, one of the more cute, adorable herbivores, rabbits, are a great example because they, they're called herbivores because they only eat plants. Another kind of would be carnivores. Here we have some wolves on a hunt. And so carnivores, like wolves, only eat other animals. And then there's the organisms that will eat plants or animals. Organisms that eat plants or animals are called omnivores. Bears. Bears are a great example. They'll eat fish, they'll eat berries, they'll eat fruits, uh, they'll eat uh, other animals. And so they're a great example of omnivores. Humans. Humans are a great example of omnivores as well. And then there's the other kind of heterotroph that we don't usually consider. These are the decomposers. When organisms die, there are nutrients still left in that organism's body. And decomposers will obtain nutrients from dead organisms and eventually cause the organism to decay. A couple categories of decomposers. The first are the decomposers called the detritivores. And like the earthworm, the picture of the earthworm, detritivores ingest and, and feed on, on nutrients from dead organisms. However, the other category of decomposers, the other category of decomposers are called saprophytes. They don't ingest, they don't have mouths, they don't have a stomach, but they absorb, they release enzymes onto whatever it is they're growing, and then they absorb those nutrients directly into their cells. And these are called saprophytes, mushrooms, and fungus are a great example of saprophytes. 
So whether the organism feeds directly or indirectly, whether the heterotroph feeds directly on plants or indirectly, for instance, the frog gets its energy indirectly from the plant because the frog would eat the insect, which ate another insect, which ate a plant. So all life, directly or indirectly, relies on autotrophs for energy. So that's it. Uh, that's really the end of this video, but please stay tuned. I would like to acknowledge some of the, uh, the photographers who made some of these images possible. Next, I would like to thank and acknowledge some of the photographers that allowed the use of their images for this video. Without their, uh, their graphics and their visuals, I don't think the video would be as, as intriguing. So thank you very much.